Okay, so in this video we're going to go over how to add a new virtual instrument to our Reaper project using the SFZ player that we've been working with. So I have a new Reaper project open right here. Um, I'm going to add a new track. I can double click in this space or press Control T. Okay, To add my instrument, my SFZ player, I'm going to click FX on my new track. And we know that this player that we want right now is called SFZ. So what you could do is type in the filter list here, SFZ, and it'll come up with that plugin only. Of course, if you, we uh, weren't sure we wanted to use that one, uh, all of the instruments that you have right now loaded in your VST path uh, can be found right here under VSTi, all plugins VSTi. So you could look through those. Uh, but of course, we just want SSD, so we'll choose that one. And press OK. All right, and it should pop up this SFZ window. It may actually be located in this uh, Reaper pop-up window. I just have it set to come up in the top level. Either way is fine. Now what you're interested in is file in this window. File will select the sound font file, which is a .ssd file uh, that your instrument is, uh, that contains the instrument. So we're gonna click in the file space here um, find your, if you're using Sonatina, just find that folder and choose your sample. So I'll choose, let's say, Keys Grand Piano. Okay, so we wait for a second for it to load the Grand Piano samples into the player. Okay, and now we have our Grand Piano loaded, so I'm going to close this, uh, close this. All right, so at this point I could be adding MIDI notes already, um, but if you want to hear what this is sounding like, we need to do a couple steps. So first of all, uh, we need to tell it to listen to MIDI signals coming in. Um, usually we're going to be using this Reaper virtual keyboard. So we need to tell it to, uh, this. we're going to click on this arrow, the input box, and choose input MIDI and then go down to all MIDI inputs and choose all channels. That tells the track to listen to MIDI inputs uh, coming in. And now as far as what to do with those, it's going to convert them into instrument sounds, in this case grand piano since that's what we loaded. If we want to hear what that's sounding like as we play, we need to do two things. First of all, this record monitoring button in the bottom right, we need to click that. That tells it to play us the sound for any for you know if the track is set to record so of course in order to hear the sound we need to set the track to record which is this record arm disarm button we'll click on that it lights up and I could take this opportunity to name my track uh, double click in this box here I'll call it grand piano and at this point I should be able to hear the sounds coming out of it so I can either go to view virtual MIDI keyboard or much easier, just press Alt-B. That brings this up, and now if I play on this, this should give me my grand piano sounds. And you see it also has the keys uh, that line up with the various notes here that sort of is arranged like a keyboard if you want to use your typing keyboard as a piano keyboard. Okay. Uh, notice also in this virtual MIDI keyboard that you can press the left and right arrows as long as this box is checked. You can press the left and right arrows to shift octaves. So if I'm hitting the Z key, you can hear this happen. All right. And that is good. Now there's one other important thing to note when we're adding virtual instruments, uh, particularly with this SFZ player. If we're adding more than one SFZ instance or, or a copy of a, an SFZ instrument. We need to change a couple settings. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend like I've added, well, I'm going to add a couple more instruments. Maybe make this one a harp and maybe this one is a flute. That's not how you spell flute. There we go. So if I have a few instruments here uh, for the sake of 
I don't know. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to change these to the actual instruments that I just said they would be. So here's a concert harp. And then I'll go into effects and change this file to a flute. Okay, so now I've got three instruments. Um, theoretically, I should, if I select this one to record, I should hear a grand piano. Ouch. Let's try again. There we go, that's better. Um, if I select this one, theoretically, I should hear a harp. And you can already hear what the issue is. You can hear some static and some popping in this. Um, if I select this one, it should be a flute. Sure enough. Okay, so to eliminate this chance of stack popping memory issues, uh, we need to do two things. So we need to highlight all these tracks. And you can do that by clicking the top track, holding shift, and clicking the bottom track. Okay, we need to right click and change two things. And they're both going to be under this menu at the bottom, track performance options. Okay, we need to first click on prevent anticipative FX. That's going to clear up some uh, crackling caused by memory issues. And then under the same menu, right click track performance options, we're going to uncheck enable track metering. All right, so just, just to summarize what we just did in the last 20 seconds, uh, right click, this menu should have allow media buffering is fine. You should have checked prevent anticipative FX and then enable track metering should not be checked. And ideally, since we had all of those selected, that should have happened for all of the tracks, which it looks like it did. So that's good. Now at this point, hopefully, fingers crossed, I shouldn't have these crackling problems, which it sounds like it's cleared up a lot. And that's going to be the case anytime you've loaded more than one instrument, which uh, the reason we really do this is to load more than one instrument, so that may happen often. All right, now you have your instruments, and they should be crackle-free. One other thing to note on this is that uh, the way I, I created these new instruments, rather than just doing a new track, clicking FX, and going through that whole rigmarole again, which really isn't that much of a hassle, but you might find it easier, especially if you're making a lot of new instruments, just to use this right-click duplicate tracks which so then it comes loaded already with the SSD player and all you have to do is change the file also you don't have to mess with the record monitoring enabled and you don't have to mess with the inputs because those are already set from the track you copied all right so that's how we add our virtual instruments to our Reaper project